Houston ISD had an announcement today saying that they are adjusting their COVID-19 policies slightly. They are keeping mask mandates for students, staff and visitors. But if a child tests positive for COVID, all parents in that child's class will start to now be notified instead of just those who had close contact. New York is the latest state to announce they're dropping pandemic requirements. They will no longer require indoor masks or proof of vaccines inside of businesses statewide. Masks in schools will still be required, but counties and cities will be able to decide for themselves whether to set any other mandates. California is expected to follow suit to some degree soon, and New Jersey, Connecticut, Delaware, and Oregon have already set dates to lift their mandates later this month. And joining us live right now to debrief on Houston's COVID policies is the chief medical officer for the city, Dr. David Purse. Dr. Purse, always a pleasure to see you. And I know the CDC has warned in the past about lifting mandates and, and policies too soon. So talk to us about timing right now. Yeah, so timing is what it's all about. And it's really, really difficult because we're hearing that a lot of the numbers are improving. But what the CDC is pointing out accurately is that, you know, in the wake of this last Omicron wave where the numbers got to be huge, for example, the wastewater was 1,500 times a greater amount of virus than we had in July of 2020. So now we're down to about 167%. Well, that's still well over 100% it was with the first big wave. So when the numbers move in the right direction, they're still very big. Hospitals have still got a lot of patients in there. We're reporting deaths every day. And so things are improving, but we're still at high levels. And that's what makes the communication so difficult. And talk about the numbers, because you mentioned we still have hospitalizations. We are still seeing deaths, uh, but Omicron, we saw way more cases. Uh, how does it compare? What have we learned looking at the numbers from this variant? Yeah, and I think this is a great example about how it gets to be confusion with the numbers. So Omicron you know, caused a smaller percentage of death for the number of people that it infected. It was less deadly. The problem was that it was able to infect people who had been infected with Alpha and Delta before. It was able to infect people who had been vaccinated. So the denominator, if you will, became much, much larger. And as a result, we saw the hospitals fill up again, the ICUs fill up again, and we're reporting deaths once again. So it's a bit of a mixed message. The, the virus has caused some confusion because on one hand, it causes less death by percentage, but on the other hand, it infects way more people. So we wind up with a lot of people being really, really sick and some people dying. And we're hearing people say, well, the death percentage is low, I'm, I'm safer. So talk about vaccines, the role they played in all of this. And for those who aren't sure or feel maybe they don't need it, where do things stand? Yeah, so we're hearing that the Omicron can in fact infect people who are vaccinated. And so some folks are turning around saying, well, see them, why bother getting vaccinated? What you're missing is that when we look at the folks that are getting hospitalized and those who are dying, they're nearly exclusively unvaccinated or those who were vaccinated but had really serious underlying medical problems. So for those folks, like most people who are generally healthy um, and are vaccinated, yes, you may get infected by Omicron, but you're not going to get anywhere near as sick as you would have otherwise, and you probably won't wind up in the hospital. So that's not a reason to say don't get vaccinated. Vaccination still helps you a great deal. Remember. You know, we're, we're dealing with a lot of folks, when we look at the numbers, we look at the folks who get um, hospitalized, but I'm hearing from a lot of folks who are getting sick for three, four, five days, and they're very sick. They don't go to the hospital, but I'm telling you what, they're missing a whole week's worth of work, and they're absolutely miserable. And I'll tell you what, I, for one, I don't want to go through that if I can avoid it, and I'm fully vaccinated. Now we have the rodeo coming up, which was a huge milestone in 2020 because that was when everything started to shut down mid rodeo. So what do you foresee for COVID over the next several weeks, several months? What are you worried about and what should people anticipate if we can? Yeah, this is a really great question. I'm so glad you asked. We as the people who live in this community, we still have some control over which way this goes. And so if we can, if we can get more people vaccinated and if we continue to wear masks, and continue to distance ourselves, the numbers will continue to go down. My concern right now is with all this talk about states lifting masking requirements and schools considering lifting masking requirements, we will see the rebound just like we've seen so many times before when we get too comfortable or complacent. Uh, and the virus will take advantage of that. So I'm looking forward to the numbers continuing to go down so that we have a nice, safe rodeo. But really, that's up to everyone, you, me, and everyone watching right now. We all have to do our part. Dr. Purse, Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston, we appreciate you. Thanks for having me.